But today, I wanna give you a sneak peek into one of our office hours calls for Flux Academy students, where I do a deep dive with one of our students on their studio website. I think there's a lot of tips and takeaways that you can apply on your websites when you're building, whether it's a freelance or an agency website. So I hope you benefit from this video, enjoy. Let's get started. All right, Mark, let's review your business website. Tell me, I remember seeing this, but if there's anything specific that you would like to get feedback on. It's a, another iteration of what you might've seen you know, in that competition. Mm -hmm. Yep. About a month or two ago, I was reviewing it with Ben, you know, Ben. Yep. And he gave me some ideas about just making the type more interesting. Everything doesn't have to follow an exact grid mm -hmm. and be boring. So he showed me some examples of business website companies that are doing, you know, interesting things with type and varying the uh, structure, you know, as you go down to make it more and more interesting. There's there's really no bells and whistles. There's no motion graphics at this point. I'm using WordPress, which is which I find more limiting than Webflow as far mm -hmm. as motion graphics go. And I, I plan, this is a work in progress. I plan to add some more things to this, but this I think this is presentable now so I can start yeah. doing some lead generation. So I just wanted you to kind of take a look at it and see if you give me any direction, you know, that I where I could take it to the next step. And let me okay. know what's nice about it already, please. Yeah, 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 I will. I will. Okay. okay. First of all, overall I think it looks good. I I really like this font that you're using here, which is Sora. It looks it's Sora it's called? Yeah. S O R A. Looks, yeah, it it looks technical which I think is good for, you know, web design development professional. I think that's good. I do like the layout. I think that the layout that you have here is non-standard. It's not boring. I think that again, typography here is, is well-made. So I think that's the, the typography, I think is the, the strong typography and layout are, are the strong, I think things about the website. And that's super important because when they're not done well, they can completely ruin the website. I'll share with you some of the things that I am not sure about, or I think that can be improved. First thing is how this, the, the logo typeface works together with this because they tell a completely different story. This one, the, the Goodkin design is very bookish, very elegant, uh, very premium, again, I'm just stating the associations that I have to this font. This one, again, it's much more technical. It's much more innovative. Now, these are both these things can be fantastic, but when you put them together, they don't necessarily, it's like two different brands in the same, in a single website. Now, again, not necessarily saying they have to be one font and, you know, just use one font. No, but if you're working with two different fonts, I think they should complement each other. These ones, they're both very good. However, they're both very distinct and tell their own stories. And this, I feel like the stories conflict a little bit. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is the first thing that I note. Okay, interesting. So, the second thing, and I don't remember if I said this the last time, but I feel like this, this image is great because it feels again local business it tells me a lot about who you are where you work and and you know where you're from mm -hmm. it's not great in terms of resolution it's okay. a little bit pixelated or compressed it just looks low quality compared to the rest of the website so that's kind of a bummer my immediate desire is to drop it into magnific uh my latest favorite tool which is the ai uh, upscaler and see what I, happens. I use, uh, it's called AI and enlarger, but somebody told me about uh Manific, which is really great. So let's, I, nice. I would just, I, I want to see what would happen. Yeah. Optimize for standards, portraits, illustration, nature and landscape, maybe nature and landscape. I don't know what, what other thing can be here. Maybe nature. I would do office. That's interesting. Na uh, mm -hmm. office how would you describe it design studio. it's a foyer it's like a lobby lobby 
for a uh, small business. In for a small business. Entry lobby. Yeah, I don't waiting know. Let's, room. Let's give this a try. Like a waiting yeah. room. I don't even know what's going to happen, but let's play around here and let's go back to this in a minute. I feel like what's happening here is, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with, there's recently a huge trend of kind of like line where you mm -hmm. see the name of the project and when on hover, you see the image. Initially, I thought you were going for that thing, but mm -hmm. maybe haven't done the interaction yet. But the thing, when you see both the text and the image and all, all this information at once, it's a little bit overwhelming. I think that in this case, the using an interaction, either when you're hovering on top of this, or maybe when, as you're scrolling and this project is in the middle of the screen, the image shows, so you can focus on one project at a time. My gut feeling is it will reduce the, because right now, again, I feel like overwhelm of information. So I think it will create a better experience if you don't have to see all of them at once, all of the images. So can I tell again, you my rationale? Yeah, of course. Okay. Well, first I'm using Word, WordPress and it would be a little more difficult for me to kind of emulate the feature that's in Webflow right now, which I think yeah, is it. a widget or something that does that. Uh, secondly, I, I feel that style that you described as being overused now. I, I noticed that in a lot of business sites, you know, for portfolios. And I just wanted to kind of switch out of that. But fantastic. You don't have to go for that. I just said, just because yeah. it's kind of like big stripes with the, the line between them, it kind of reminded me of that. You don't have to go for that. We we jumped immediately, or maybe I jumped immediately into solutions, but let I, I don't want to jump into the solution. Instead, I just want to focus on what I consider a little bit of a problem, which is right now on the screen, mm -hmm. there's a little bit too much information and it's difficult for for you know for me to process all of it we have three very big titles each of them has a subtitle we have three big images and we have three par text paragraphs it's understanding the hierarchy or the reading pattern here is difficult okay because okay. there's just a lot it can, there's a lot of solutions for that i mean i've mentioned one but there's unlimited amounts of solutions um, but that's, that's one thing that I feel like, you know, could be better. The other thing is this black, black frames for, for the images, uh, which sometimes seems like equal from all sides. Sometimes it looks like in this one, like the top and left are thicker than the, the bottom and right one. I think that this, the image can either be cropped better or maybe with, something like a drop shadow or something, it can be, look a little bit more elegant just in how you crop them and how you incorporate them on this background. Um, so are you saying to maybe remove the borders or just to make everything yeah, more but why, elegant? Why, why, do they, why are they necessary? I don't know that they're necessary. It's just part of that style, I thought, you know, just kind of a little rough, uh, yeah, the regular um, style. Then why not? Then why not? If you've been using this thin line for everything, why not yeah. keep the thin line here as well? Okay, I'll try that. Yeah. Could use, or I'll try it without it as well. Yeah. Let's... I'll try that one first. Yeah. Now here, in general, I very much like when there's kind of like an overlap, an image goes, or text goes a little bit on top of an image or the other way around. I like this. Here, I feel like it's a little bit makes it, things hard to read, especially when you get dark text on his hair. So either just moving things around a little bit, maybe the, if the image just comes here, you know, this light corner is just here, it's not a problem, but as it is right now, it is a little bit, you know, makes it annoying to read the last end of the sentence. That being said, the rest of it, it looks pretty, it, it looks would you, great. Would you have um, just another minute just to go through yeah. one of the case studies? And yeah, by the way, I wanted to see what happened here. Oh my God, look at this. You can email that to me now, right? Uh, no. <laughs> can you wow, see look that? At that. Can, you, can you see the difference before, yeah. after? It's crazy. Oh my God, it replaced the, did you see the photo that you have on the wall with the cars? It turned it into mountains. <laughs> Wasn't that funny? Uh, crazy, but it removed the text from the window, but everything else looks super, super sharp. It looks like a professional photo now.
Wow, that is great. Okay, I'm going to download that and send it over to you. Okay, go into the projects page and into a case study. Sure. Uh, yeah. I think that looks great besides the fact that the headings here are indented and not aligned with the paragraph, which is, it just makes it annoying and, and hard to read a little bit. I would also oh. make, I think I would make this font a little bolder because the, the size difference between the heading and the paragraph is not that big. And I would want to create more contrast between the heading and the paragraph. So I would probably make this bold. Let's see if I can go ahead into the code and let's see. Oh my God. I, yeah. WordPress writes such a, uh, yeah. Elementor uh, is uh it's like a nightmare. Right, it's Elementor. Got yeah. it. Okay. But here I've been, I've, I was able to make this bold. Uh, yeah. There's like a sub yeah. sub bold and a bold. What, but what pushes it to the left? Okay. I don't know what pushes it to the left, but yeah. I think okay. it would look better when it's bold. And you're saying that the indent is just too confusing and yeah, annoying? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to like follow that style of the uh, headline. Not, Where? Well, in this case, it went, you know. It would... No, the, see, this looks much, it, it's much easier to read. Thanks, Ran. Very helpful. Yeah, happy to help.